So, so it's my privilege to welcome Dr. Kiran Bedi, who is the first woman to have joined the office ranks of the Indian Police Service. She was the 24th former, she was the 24th Lieutenant uh, Governor of Pondicherry, also served the United Nations as civilian police advisor in peacekeeping operations. Winner of Gallantry Award and the Maxese Award, also known as Asia's Nobel Peace Award. She has a biopic on her life called Yes, Madam Sir, made by an Australian. She founded two foundations, Navjoti and Indian Vision Foundation, which served the underprivileged in rural urban areas and in prisons for the last 30 years. Her latest book, Fearless Governance, now translated in Hindi and Tabal, is based on ground realities as she saw in serving as the Lieutenant Governor of Pondicherry. It was released by Ms. Indra Rui, Nui, Professor Debashish Chatterjee, and Smita Prakash. They called it a blueprint of good governance, cutting across leadership qualities, both in the private and public space. More than happy to welcome you, Madam, and it's all yours. I thank you for this very, very prestigious opportunity to connect with all of you. I would have loved, if I had more time, I would have loved to hear the question answer, which is you were about to have when I came in. That was from Mr. Grish Nair. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. Yes, madam. Yes. I'm so sorry I've missed you and I missed it because I would have stayed longer if I had yeah. not have a another webinar at six sharp of our own demonstrative learning channel, YouTube okay. channel, which we work with children. So I'm so sorry to have missed a wonderful opportunity. No, no problem, ma'am. We'll, we'll connect with you after the conference then, you know, no, yeah. not a problem. That's yeah. wonderful. But I, it's a totally personal loss, friends. Yeah. It's a wonderful, as I said, uh, I have a presentation as I thought about this event. Yeah. I And you asked me to what to speak on. I thought about humanizing education. There is humanity in education. Why I'm saying this is coming from my background of policing. Every time a crime happens and the channels come back to me to ask me about the crime and the policing pattern and the investigation, what, this, what I answer instead is not investigation. I keep telling the channels, I'm not an investigator. And a crime which has happened, whether it's Aftab or it's recently of the Yadav uh, women, two women who were both butchered. I keep asking the question, I think, before all of us is not the investigation, because everybody is interested in the story. Everybody is interested in how the crime was committed and uh, how will he be hanged? Where is the evidence? But my question always is, I tilted towards saying, let's find out why did he commit it? Why did this happen? What went wrong in this man to make him a brute? Because it was totally brutish, a brutish, a brutal crime. So what made a man, uh, having gone to school, colleges, and professional skills, yet and be made so brutish to going for a butcher knife and butchering somebody he, he thought or he believed or he expressed that he loved? So friends, it's from this background I offered the subject myself is education in, and humanity. I have a little pro a program. I have a presentation to show you. Please go along with me a little and we will take the Q&A after that. That's an expression of what I think has not gone right in our education, that it has produced such like brutes, brutes of the ones which are almost exposing on a daily basis. And if my presentation goes right, and if it depicts quickly, it'll, I'm sure you will just love it. I preserved it over the years because I'm basically a teacher at heart. I started my career as a lecturer in political science. I also was a special commissioner of training in Delhi police. So I'm basically a very strong uh, teacher at heart. And I'm also a lover of education at heart um, because after the policing uh, alongside, I did a law degree, I did a PhD, I did a postdoctoral Nehru fellowship and written several books. So I'm basically um, a, a person in uniform uh, looking at always the why of everything, not only the how, but the why.
So here it is, the why. I have some evidence of the why. And it started from this morning itself. Here is my uh, little presentation. Here it is. So it's about humanizing education. Let's go to the first slide. Yeah. This is the child I'm presenting and see how battered this boy is. This little child, no hand is empty. On his right as, as an iPhone, on the left he has the uh, food, which he's struggling with, shoelaces not tied. But you see how overloaded he is. And this is, I think, almost becoming the it, because of the reality of every child. But there is humanity. Here are the seeds of the delinquent behavior. I captured this morning, friends. This boy is the peaceful. This boy. And parents do not know. He's keeping sperm. And not apparently in good company. But who knows he's missing school? He's going to be late in school. That's going to be famous. Parents asking, teachers asking. Very important. Why is he missing school? Why is he late to school? This is where the delinquency and deviances come. Hey, tum school kyun nahi ja rahe? School kyun nahi ja rahe? Obviously, watching something together, and it has to be something obviously not something entertaining. Whether it's a Here's the next one. So first, first is a is a depiction of a boy going late to school, doesn't understand the value of going in time to school, has bad company, and we do not know whether the teacher will take him to task or parents will know his behavior. That was the first incident I wanted to show you. I'm not sure whether the school teacher would take him to task and teacher would find the time or energy to do, or he may just let him be, allowing him to come late. And he must have done that earlier because he got emboldened to take the teacher of the class for granted. Now, here is the next example. Teachers also unlearn. Here is it. He's also late to school. Vanes? Se me vanes? Zire zaman. Mosa Perseritma, let's see.
The third one, this is now about parents. First was the boy himself. Second one was the teacher's role. You have all kinds of teachers. Here is a parents now. Let's look at parents are the real teachers. Listen to this, please. जिसने कभी भी किसान को पसीना बहाते हुए नहीं देखा बारिश के एक एक बूंद के लिए तरसते हुए नहीं देखा गेहूं की फसल नहीं देखी गेहूं की बाली नहीं देखी उसे गेहूं के दाने की कदर क्या होगी इसलिए तो इतनी आसानी से कह दिया कि सारा का सारा खाना फेंक दो मम्मी मैंने नहीं बेटा गलती तुम्हारी नहीं है हम आजकल के माँ बाप की जो बच्चों को एबीसीडी पढ़ाने में इतने ज्यादा उलझ जाते हैं कि अन्न का महत्व सिखाने ही भूल जाते हैं जब हम बचपन में खाने के लिए बैठते थे ना तो थाली बचा बचा कर गाते थे कि उतना ही लोग थाली में बेकार न जाए नाली में ये बात मेरी अपनी बेटी नहीं समझ पाई इसलिए ऐसे मुंह उठा के कह दिया कि बचा हुआ सारा का सारा खाना फेंक दो मम्मी इट्स नॉट माय फॉल्ट अगर मैंने फार्मर्स नहीं देखे विलेजर्स नहीं देखे किसान नहीं देखा है पर अपने पापा को काम करके मेहनत करके पैसे कमाते हुए देखा है ना इतनी तो अक्ल है तुझ में स्वीटी के एक एक पैसा कितनी मुश्किल से कमाया जाता है How do we learn values, friends? We learn values from parents. When they sit down, when they find the time to communicate and then explain matters by demonstration, by role modeling. I'm not sure whether we educate our children that there's something called conscience inside. Who finds the time to teach them that every one of us is born with a conscience? There's a, who makes them so that they can listen to the inner voice, inner voice to find out what is right and what is wrong. They basically are born already, I believe, biologically inside. We're already programmed to distinguish between the right and the wrong. But over a period, that inner voice goes lost because we are not made aware that we have an inner voice, which is called the conscience, and that there's a conscience alarm, which will tell us, oh, hey, we are tired, we are lying. Hey, we are stealing. Here, we are, we are, we are cheating. All this will come. It does come. And when you ask a small child, are you doing the right thing? Is that the right thing to do? The child will tell you the difference between the right and the wrong. But over a period, he suppresses his inner voice 
called the conscience. And who educates him? That's the question. Do we make him aware that uh, running away from home without the permission of parents and then not getting connected, with, remaining connected with the parents or getting continued to be to be suffering domestic violence at home and then not crying out and asking for help? Where's that conscience? If it's not learned when it's the right time to learn and keep nourishing it, how will we know the difference between right and wrong? Which is why every every one of us is now being, every parent is being saying, keep make your boys responsible. Groom them up to be responsible and groom up your girls to be brave. That's called the conscience alarm. Let's look at this. Make your kids, kids work. Make your kids work. Slide. Oh, slide need make your kids work. I had a sli another slide which said, make your kids work. We have now this. We are just this, this is about the values about. I had another slide which I think I missed out. It doesn't matter. Make the kids work. So when we say make the kids work, allow the kids, allow the kids to help at home. Allow the kids to understand parents' work. Allow the kids to to hand uh, to support mommy. I remember when I was a child how we used to help mommy when she was cooking. We were to do lots of things. We used to clean. We used to uh, help her. Maybe cut the vegetables. Uh, maybe light the fire. We didn't have a gas gas stove at home, and we had to have the coal uh, uh, coal uh, coal whatever you call them. But we were all helping at home. It was all helping. And then why not help people help? At the moment, that's considered child labor. No, it's not child labor. It's a, now we're talking about internships. You see the word internships? Kids are not learning to work hands on. So that and they're not they're only knowing how to run their iPhones or how to continue to remain engaged with information technology. So make the kids work. Give them responsibility. They like being appreciated. They like being given a responsibility. So why not kids? That's why in the school they make they make class captains, uh, house captains. It's making them work, but that's leadership. Here, make make them do shramdan, make them do school, setting your classes right, cleaning up your um, the lawns, keep leaving your schools tidy. It's make the kids work. Why are we not doing that? I'm not sure whether uh, the PTAs approve it, and they they probably say, hey, why not clean up the toilets ourselves? Teachers, leaders, everybody take take uh, take the turns, and everybody does what everybody is supposed to do. That's called respecting labor. We don't make our kids work, and we are making them elitist. We are also our values of co are neither caught nor taught. This is all about media. See, three of them: the public opinion, the legislature, and the media. I was reading in the newspapers today, there was one murder which had been uh, recently, yesterday's news and today's uh, in the newspapers, where he's committed a murder after watching a movie. He said, I learned to how to do it on the media. So media is playing a very critical role of media has a responsible role. Media is equally contributing towards increase in crime in its own way. It's, it's entertaining us, but it's also, uh, there's already a chat a, a very big discussion going on. Um, uh, and to, I think yesterday's American courts were discussing whether uh, it should be available on the Google how to make these kinds of weapons and, and these bombs. Because some uh, uh, parents of a particular child who became a victim of that that uh, knowledge has taken them to the American to the courts. And I think we should be having the judgment today. Supreme Court of America is a judging the right of the uh, social sector, the the uh, right of these posts, whether they can give this kind of manuals how to make lethal weapons. So why values and values are neither caught, they're not taught. They are learned like this from legislature's behaviors, from media behaviors, and then the public opinion. So friends, my another uh, uh, thing written here is we are sowing and reaping. If we sow honesty in children, we reap trust. But we need to explain to them goodness, 
to friends, humility to greatness, perseverance. If we are, we learn, we get victory. If we learn consideration, we learn harmony. We learn, we do hard work, we earn success. We learn forgiveness, we learn, we earn reconciliation. We are open, we reap intimacy. We learn to be patient, we learn, we reap improvements constantly. We have faith, we reap miracles. These are, th these are certain very important qualities, turn by turn, parents and teachers have to imbibe or pass them on gradually, perseveringly, day one day at a time, class, class at a time, on all these sowing and reaping, to understand that they will reap trust only if they're honest. They will have long-lasting friends only if they're good in behavior. They will achieve greatness only if they uh, be humble. So what is humility? How will they be humble? And if they will achieve victory only when they persevere, that they can't go to the Everest on a helicopter. You have to persevere one step at a time. And if they want harmony, you have to be considerate. You want success? Work hard. And not, not you cannot fast track it. You've got to work hard. So all these things, friends, the onus goes back to parents and teachers, back to schools. These are that's why I've called soulful schools. And that's what I thought. It's these are all matters of the soul. Here's another last one. Namaste. Hare Krishna. Kya naam hai aapka? कहाँ पे रहते हो? गोवर्धन में रहता हूँ। कितने साल के हो? तीन साल का। तीन के हो? और पढ़ते हैं कौन सी क्लास में? गुरुकुल। अच्छा गुरुकुल में पढ़ते हैं स्कूल नहीं जाते हैं आप? नहीं। एबीसीडी पढ़ते हो आप? क्या क्या है उसमें एबीसीडी? ए फॉर एप्पल? नहीं। अर्जुन। बी फॉर? पल्ला। सी फॉर? चतुर्न्या। डी Tarvichete, Puruchete, Shambhita, Ruruchava, Mahamuka, Shaiva, Himakura, Vachandaya. And what you have kept, what do you do with it? I will tell you. Will you show it? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jai Jai Prabhu Pan, Prabhu Pan, Prabhu Pan, Jai Sri Ram, Jai Jai Guru De, Guru De, Guru De, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Jai Gora Hari. That's what I assembled for all of you, which I thought were, the, were speaking thousands of words. Rather than I making a speech, which I'm not, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a preacher. So therefore, I decided to present what would touch our hearts, what touch our soul. So back to you, sir. Back to you. Thank you so much. It was really delightful hearing that and actually touched our soul and our hearts. I think we have uh, members of the audience who would like to ask questions. I'm opening the floor. In case there's someone who wants me to read out their question, that's OK. But if you would just, if you would just raise your hands, I'll be able to uh, give you. So anyway, by the time they're getting, Girish Nayaji wants to speak. Please, sir, unmute yourself. I'd like to uh, ask, uh, uh, ma'am, uh, you talked about having uh, children, you know, work, and that's an excellent point, right? How do you think that India as a country can can work together to, you know, have volunteer assignments, internship assignments, and get that culture of dignity of labor at a larger way? You know, we're such a large country, and you're absolutely right. Kids are sometimes perhaps, you know, uh, becoming all, you know, only only connected to the phones or or the digital media, you know, and uh, it's very, very important that the point you brought up, and it can help solve many uh, societal ills, perhaps, you know, and including mental health issues, fa even family issues, so, you know, and that 
thing of brother bro brotherhood across you know strata of society i think uh, can can be covered with many of that but how 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 can one actually go about doing that in a larger way mr nair japan does that japanese every child before they leave the class they yes. put the class in order right in fact i've seen some films on uh, where children they are putting everything right leaving everything in order and tidy the yep. way it was and they do it themselves and they do it collectively that means you're bringing collaboration yes and you're bringing sanitation hygiene dignity of labor they do everything together yes and the teachers with them and if you do this from the child level child childhood level nursery level begin from nursery you see the change then they will do the tidy same thing back home they'll be helpful at home they'll also leave their rooms tidy same thing they'll take those value systems at home but we don't teach them school they we leave them the way they are so and shutdown was gandhi ji's see our own and this is our own legacy shutdown was given to the country by gandhi ji himself so we were, we remember gandhi ji but we don't remember many of the ideals he practiced and he didn't preach he practiced so if we bring this kind of dignity of labor putting things back in order take as respect things for others leaving is consideration you see all the value systems consideration yes. for others being tidy personally disciplined respectful collaboration teamwork all these qualities all they coming now but they can't be taught by uh, by books and preaching that's why i thought let me show you something rather than i speaking yes. let's speak for itself I, when i was in police training college my police trainees were doing shramdan i taught them shramdan and they were leaving their classes when they would go home because that was my condition that you can policemen were never asked to go home to your families training was considered like like a boot camp you can't go home i said no you will go home so every friday evening i should let them go home but put your house in order they used to leave or orderly classrooms clean chairs they had adopted portions of the lawns in my police training college in jaroda kala and everybody tended to their responsibility and left happily came back to fresh okay. very yeah. fresh institution every morning a uh, sunday night by monday morning the classes begin see they loved so it was like i i do this for you you do this and they learned it yes. you know we did it and it worked the the lawns were clean neat full of flowers they tended it they, it's a sense of ownership they got a sense of ownership i think that's the key right that was so nice thank you so much i have another question for you if so in your book you uh, an introduction to your book you write um, i never accepted inequality injustice and servitude i created resources and found solutions do we have a solutions that all schools will be equal one day we can be equal in value systems we can be equal in our uh, mission missionary zeal we can be equal in one thing why another country like if supposing going back to japan and the equal in this certain value systems is equal they are premium they are fundamental they are natural the laws of nature you will reap as you sow so if everybody every teacher every school starts saying we will reap as we sow and what are we sowing value systems are are permanent they're natural yes, yes. so where the where's the debate to can you be dishonest is being dishonest the right thing telling lies the right thing remaining dirty is the right thing being cheating is the right thing is leaving un, uh, uh, grabbing and being selfish the right thing i think these are un, not debatable so if all teachers believe in these value systems and start instilling them at the right from the nursery level all schools will grow up With, with basic fundamental values and if they continue to get nurtured reinforced in home at home and then subsequently to the classes up to the 12th standard and then the university takes over in its own way why would we not have a population which will have values as its fundamentals so for academics we have uh, in examination uh, what kind of an examination would you uh, will you um, suggest for values so that we can give kids a value report card maybe giving what have you what are the extra what have you given what have you given what have you done for others that could be the test what 
have you done for others while you were studying while you were doing he said i did this at home or i did this for my grandparents or i did this for a society what have you given the giving not taking yeah, that's 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 so true. Actually, we, there's very less that uh, we've actually given, and we've not even taught children how to, you know, to uh, to serve and to give. Uh, so what give, is your take? giving? Giving can be in kind and also in spirit. Remember, mm -hmm. kindness. It's not in money. Children may not have money, but children have kindness. Children have respect. Children have gratitude. They can look after their elderly parent and say, "I looked after my elderly parent." after I returned from school. I tended to my home like this, or I tended to, or I taught my younger sister this. It's giving. It's giving where they thought they could give. So it's not a question of money at the moment. Uh, so do you think that we should begin with uh, teachers training and teaching them how to make children more, um, uh, more full of values and with the ability to give? Absolutely. I think we, that's where the parent, both parental Teachers, teachers are also parents are also teachers and teachers also if they adopt certain things that these are th necessary things, but they must participate. Ch teachers have to part, not order them to do so that it's not as their job. It's our it's love of doing it, playing also together, singing together, dancing together, cleaning together, eating together. I think all these things is togetherness. Uh, so, madam, if you write a book on bringing up your kids, uh, what would your first paragraph be? The first is to make the child a better, a good, sound human being who learns a skill and becomes successful in the application of skills for larger good. So first thing is humanize this boy, child. Teach all human values alongside as the child grows. There was another clip I showed you is we take them to Europe. Why don't we do that's why prime minister is encouraging local tourism india tourism know your country before you know others so mm -hmm. see we could we could one day mathram trains could be run for youth there could be a one day mathram national integration train which takes the northern children to the south and south to the north no india we can do these kinds of integrative trains so that could be called national integration youth trains where the youth the other day, I was speaking in Trivandrum uh, in a school, and the, uh, I asked the children, uh, raise your hands, how many, and I told them, I've come all the way from Delhi to speak to you. Children, how many of you have seen Red Fort? Have you seen India Gate? How many of you children you have been to uh, uh, Delhi? You would believe me or not, not one hand went up. Not one child had seen Delhi. And there were about at least more than 2,000 children before me. Not one had seen New Delhi. They do not know India. Many southern children do not know India. Similarly, northern children do not know South. Mm -hmm. How will be? They do not know Northeast. So Northeast they don't know. The uh, South they do not know. North they do not know. How will we look at national integration? So we could have children's, we could have Vande Matra, Vande, Vande Bharat trains, national integration, bringing students coming together from north and south, learning each other's language as they travel, each other's culture, each other's food. And that's what will really bring in national integration. So yeah, I would only humanize. So uh, I would look at humanizing my child and also becoming value based, knowing Indian history knowing Indian civilization, learning the power of prayer, understanding Indian culture. Thank you so much. And if you take uh, one last question, will that be OK? Yes, of course. Yeah. So basically, um, when we are talking about children's discipline, how do we ch keep children out of crime and out of drugs or anything like that? Uh, safe behavior at home. It's all about culture. You see, these are all acquired. Crime is acquired. You're not born. It's acquired from the environment, which means if the media is not going to change or the media will continue to do what it's doing, it's, it's their, their, their compulsion, then we know what the children understand, the discerning, that that's wrong. They reject it. After all, all of us don't be, take to crime, all our children don't take to crime, few do. Few get influenced. That means they were not, they did not understand the, they could not discern the difference between right and wrong and rejection. 
the, 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 it's called the nutrition N, the, uh, the vitamin N. Vitamin N is the vitamin N is learning to say no, no to drugs, no to crime, no to bad behavior. So once they start rejecting, even if the media is projecting, media will have no takers. Wonderful. That was so nice to hear that vitamin N. And I think I'm going to start preaching about vitamin N from now onwards. Uh, thank you so much for your valuable time. And uh, we would love to keep hearing you, but I'm sure you are you already have prior assignments. Thank you, madam. And uh, we are grateful. And on behalf of everyone, I just want to express my gratitude. Thank I you. It was a pleasure you. hearing you. No, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. I, I made sure that in the shortest time, I give you the maximum I can. And that's what I tried to do. I dug into my library because I just love documentation and I store everything which, which, which is close to my heart. So when you gave me this opportunity, it dug into my doc documentation and gave you what I preserved carefully. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.